The Heritage Skills and Education Project is a three-year heritage lottery funded project working with schools, colleges and universities across the North East, looking at historic buildings, thinking about reuse, repair and conservation and hoping to inspire these students to think about careers in the heritage sector. Students have been exploring all sorts of historic buildings from Victorian mortuaries at the coast through to John Dobson designed churches. This is the Masonic Hall in the Sim, uh, which was built during the late 1800s. The building we're working on for our Heritage Skills Initiative is the uh, South Mill in Durham. We're like, learning about a church and how like, we're doing a project about fixing the church back up. We have to come up with ideas to like renovate it and make it more modern and try and get more of the community going and like, involved, getting more involved. The girls have been allocated a building in Durham near the cathedral and they're looking at ways in which they could renovate that and make proposals to the cathedral for its renovation of future use. One of the ideas we've had there to change this building and do be a restaurant. You can see it's like a nice big area with like a lot of the tall roof and a posh look. So we're looking at the history behind it, the significance, and then we're trying to, trying to draw up a general sort of conservation plan for it. We're going to try and renew this building in a way that's the same style as it would have been when it was in its prime hundreds of years ago, and then perhaps use it for a modern day purpose. Students have had a go at all sorts of different practical activities, working with craftspeople who are currently employed in the sector. They've tried things out that aren't available on their mainstream courses, and they've been able to explore for themselves how traditional materials work and how old techniques can be used on buildings today. I'm making a stained glass window of a sunset, and then I'm going to Make cutting the glass so it will fit the template. So then, oh, using yeah, the like connecting pieces, we can then put it together to make a proper piece of stone glass work. You've got to have it quite exact, otherwise the pieces of glass just easily chip off. So it's quite hard to get it exactly right. So this is exactly the same technique that they would have used when they built their windows. Have to have the patience to do it, so get the right line. Must have took forever, mustn't it? Well. <laughs> Looking at these skills sort of helps to keep the trade like alive and renewal in the future. We're just letting the pupils have a, an opportunity to see what's involved with stonework, see what's involved with the actual hands-on, seeing what stone feels like, how it works, how the chisels cut it, and maybe some idea of sort of how how a stonemason would produce a piece of work from an idea through a template through applying it to the stone and how it works out and hopefully they've got something that's, that's good at the end. It's like nice to do like a new craft, like a different craft that you don't really get a chance to do. Today we're doing a lime slake which is a, an explosive reaction. Along with heritage consolidation we're building stone with lime and we're pointing up lime brickwork reproducing what would be on site with uh, little sample boards. It definitely gives sort of practical background behind what materials we'll be using or sort of the buildings we'll be looking at to use. And something that sort of the actual academic course doesn't provide, this sort of more practical session gives us that, that, that information that we all usually get in the academic world. This workshop today is an introduction to wood carving. We're starting off with doing a lettering which will enable the students to get a feel of the hand tools and the amount of pressure they're putting on their tools and hopefully at the end of the day come out with a usable piece of work. You never know who's going to turn out a wonderful piece of work and already there's some really nice things coming up here. Do some sort of basic joinery tuition and take them through some previous historic restoration work I've done just so they can get a feel of what they're going to come across when they're out and about in the real world. What we're doing today is we're going round the harbour and um, asking local people what they think of the project, any improvements or anything we should put in and like, what they would do. The students have come up with really, really creative ideas, all sorts of things from chocolate factories to um, cafes. They are now modelling the various ideas before we put it all together into one final model and to make a decision on our, our particular future reuse for the Masonic Hall. The skills that they're developing now is giving them a taste of all the other trades that are involved in the industry. And they really they've showed a lot of interest in pushing on and developing these trades to, for future employment. Through this project I've learned about how I, myself, can help fix all their buildings going into that half of the industry instead of modern buildings. A lot of the girls are thinking about careers in architecture. 
and so they're really finding it useful to know about the different materials that can be used in a building that uh, work to best effect. The heritage sector is a growth sector so I was hoping that um, doing something like this could help me in the future as I'm carrying on into postgraduate education. It takes a little bit of time to actually sort of get the hand-eye coordination because I don't know maybe a lot of people today don't really do a great deal other than, I don't know, you know, maybe a bit of drawing, a bit of painting or whatever, but something like this is, is so very different, I think. If we're not careful, we'll have a, a generation of youngsters who can't put up a shelf, can't cut a piece of wood, don't know how to measure accurately in a, in a practical sort of way. There's plenty of jobs that need an awareness of how, how things work in 3D. So whether it's going into engineering and how machine parts go together or like going into the building trade itself or technicians or things like that. And also just in, in general life, being able to read a, a plan or something and, and being able to see what that would actually look like if you walked through it. So it's not, it's not just architecture. It's anything in, where you're producing something and you're going from an idea into an actual object. They're actually putting something into practice and learning how to use skills they might not otherwise pick up in a school setting and use them in a historical framework. So they're, they're making a real application of their academic studies in a practical way. The project that they've done, we've managed to integrate it within the, the qualification that they are studying, so it will help them gain new cash points to go on to university, but it will also help them um, to work independently because they have been left to their own devices with the project. The difference in the, the children's social skills is absolutely amazing since September, but they came in like shy little mice to the first event and were barely able to talk to an adult, and we've been down and seen this afternoon um, where they've displayed absolutely amazing interviewing skills. In terms of life skills, I suppose they're learning that um, they'll achieve something in the long run if they're patient and um, they persevere. It's attention to detail. It's teaching people that attention to detail so they do it the proper way every time and they don't try and cut corners. Their social development is huge, they're working together as a team brilliantly, their 3D spatial awareness has improved dramatically and the whole event has been really, really successful. It's been great to see the development in all the teams that have taken part this year, both practically and as people as well. We really hope that they'll take these things that they've learned on into the rest of their education and maybe even their future careers. We're really looking forward to working with more teams in the next couple of years of the project. For us to find good lads who are willing to work hard and are interested in old buildings. This is a fantastically rewarding career for them. It gives them a real understanding of what their parents did, that their grandparents did and how they can develop their own skills to follow in their footsteps really. And it's not until they have the opportunity of finding this new um, skill that uh, they might realise there's some other craft they can take on. When I first heard about it I thought it'd just be like sitting in a classroom writing up like sheets and sheets of work. But it's it's more get involved. If these skill sets aren't passed on to the next generation, we're going to lose a whole set of skills because not everything these days can be pre-manufactured in a factory. In the future, when I have a job, I think back to this and think of how what materials are used, what we substitute in, the other things we can use, and create like mo mo mold, modern, and all together. It has helped the, the lecturing staff realise how much we can link it into this, the qualification that the students are studying, um, so that. The, the whole curriculum becomes a more holistic approach and they can link every single unit that they study back to this project. It's fantastic isn't it, to be able to pass on what you know and to have people listen to what you what you think and what you've learnt over the years. I learnt from my dad who was a stonemason. He started in 1963 and he passed it all on to me and now I'm getting to pass on a little bit and you, you're leaving something behind you. We well, might, might make them actually sort of look above pavement level which <laughs> would be nice because there's so much beautiful ornamental stonework about and yeah. most of it is up above shop fronts and nobody really looks at it but it's nice to it's, ni it's nice to pass pass at least the experience on even if it's that's all it is at least they've sort of seen how a process works and what's involved the heritage sector is quite a substantial sector of the, the building industry, so it's imperative that young people coming through, or 
are taught and learn the skills that we have, pass them on to future generations so they in turn can care for some of the real iconic structures that we look after. <laughs>